Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Katzler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. I attribute this episode to Bruce Bittenbender, K3BBB, who suggested that I use the Keir memories in the ICOM 7300 with the reverse beacon network. I thought, well, no, that's an interesting idea. Now, I did a video on the reverse beacon network. It's uh, Ask Dave number 32, which was a long time ago. I mean, it's still valid, every bit of it. The idea is that there's this thing called a reverse beacon network, and it will listen for you to send a CQ or a test in Morse code, RIDI, PSK31. And I think they may be adding FT8 to that also. Okay, so what happens, however, is you have to send perfect Morse code because it's machine decoded. Now, as we've already learned from some of my own videos where I send hand-sent Morse code, my, my code uh, ratio between the DIT and the DA is more like 1 to 6 rather than 1 to 3. Um, but the radio, the ICOM 7300, has memories in there. And furthermore, you can edit them really easily just by a bunch of touching and poking. You don't have to send anything into it like some radios or so on. And then what comes out of the radio will be picture-perfect code. Okay? And that should go into the reverse beacon network. So I've got some charts first to explain what the reverse beacon network is. Okay? And how it's used conceptually. And then... The, I've got a bunch of uh, screenshots of how to set up the ICOM 7300 to send a memory for code to the remote beacon network. Now, a lot of you have 7300s, and this will apply directly. Uh, those who don't have, if you have a modern radio, you have something very similar. So uh, you can do that. Or if you uh, don't have memories in your radio, you could use your keyer, I'd recommend really a keyer, to send code. Now there are two things it accepts, CQ and then a call sign, or test and then a call sign. Now I'm not calling CQ tonight, I'm just going to do test and we'll see how this goes. Let's look at the charts. Setting up the ICOM 7300 for the reverse beacon network, the ICOM 7300, of course, is the reference station HF transceiver. And so whenever I do anything about HF, I'll use that particular rig to demonstrate it. Now, we got to understand the reverse beacon works a little bit differently. Um, you send something like this. CQ, CQ, CQ from KE0OG, okay? And then the software that they have looks for that and then sends it off to reversebeacon.net, okay? So there are a bunch of beacon stations around the world using this software. They have a wideband antenna. You can, they can listen sometimes on just one band uh, or they can get... Uh, a software-defined receiver that can hear on multiple bands and very wide uh, pass bands and get like the whole HF station at once. And then they take the first 91 kilohertz of each band. And then it goes into the software, which is called CW Skimmer or RIDI Skimmer, and looks for CQs and tests. And then those are sent to reversebeacon.net. This is a close-up of the software here. You see, this is the... Uh, that right there points to 7025.66, and you can see right there R A 5 uh, 4 dot 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 uh, G. There could be something in there, but uh, it would be an E and a da da, and so on. And uh, so it, it figures these things out, but it picks up all the stuff that's on the band. I want to show a picture to show how this works. This is the lighthouse in, in Newport, Oregon. Um, and it's a beacon, right? It's a light with a beacon at a known position right there. Now, a ship at sea uses the beacon to determine the position. So we'll call this a standard beacon. It's a one-way beacon 
The lighthouse is the beacon at a known position. It sends a one-way beacon out to a ship at sea who, if knowing north, can determine the direction to this beacon. And if there's another lighthouse, it can triangulate and so on. Now let's do a reverse beacon, okay? We'll call this the dark house because it's not transmitting at all. The light, see the light right here comes from the ship. And in here is a detector that determines what direction the, all the various lights are coming from. And it sends out the direction of this light back to the ship, okay? Now that would work equally well. You've got a ship at sea equipped with a light, the light from the ship, the dark house figures out the direction that light is coming from and transmits that over radio, whatever, sends that direction back to the ship so the ship can say, we are being heard from, and it'll give uh, the information there, okay? And that is how the reverse beacon network works. It's at reversebeacon.net, note the dot net, uh, and it picks up uh, all of what it hears and it lists it here. And then you can go in and see who is hearing you. Now you can pick a lot of uh, stuff up from this that I'll show a little later. But let's set up the ICOM 7300 for this. This is a, I'm on 20 meters, okay. Here's a little uh, ionospheric sounder going up like that. Captured that. All right, this is in uh, 14054, is in the CW band, in a part of the CW band that doesn't see much use. And anyway, at this point in the day, uh, the amount of activity has gone down quite a bit. Okay, so push the menu button and you get this. This is the menu. Scope, audio, keyer, meters, and so on. And you're going to push on keyer. So click on the keyer, all right? And what you get right here are your eight memories for the keyer, okay? And uh, ICOM has gone ahead and put some stuff up in there. I decided to use memory three. Here's where I'm gonna be transmitting. But what we wanna push is this button right here, edit set, edit set. And when you do that, you get edit or set Okay, you wanna press on edit, okay, and then you can pick the one that you want to edit. Notice there's one of two, because there's eight memories. I picked memory three, okay, and I pressed right on this, and that brought me to what is in memory three. And then you can click on edit, click. You don't click, you press, you touch it. Uh, click on uh, edit, and you get a keyboard. How cool. Well, I don't know how cool. I'm almost 70 and my fat fingers like to get about three letters at a time. But I spelled out here, test, space, test, space, K-E-0-O-G, K-E-0-O-G, and then I repeated that, okay? So test, test. Why no D-E? Well, the reverse speaking network isn't really looking for one. And in the examples, they give test, test, then you give the call sign, and uh, they will take this call sign. That's what they're looking for, okay? So when you are done with this, you press enter in order to keep it there, enter, all right? Uh, you can clear and start over. You can use some of the pro signs. That's what SIMB stands for symbol. Actually, they are the pro signs that you can put in there. Enter or just go back. All right, and this allows you to see the rest. So you press enter, and having pressed enter, you get back to this. So I've got test, test, my call sign twice, test, test, my call sign twice, and K to indicate the transmission is over. All right, and so that is now in memory three. All right, and we're going to press this to go back, and that brings us up to this screen right here, which has uh, the memories on it. Now, there's one thing you need to do that if you don't do will drive you nuts, okay? Go down and press the button marked function. Function. 
and then break in. Make sure this is pressed, that it's circled and not off, okay, circled. Break in means when you touch the key, it will transmit. Otherwise, you have to push the transmit button first. So having made sure that that's on break in, now we go back here, we touch the keyer, go into the keyer, and then we push M3. Just press the button. Okay, and this is what we see happening here. You can see what is in the memory here as it goes out the door, it'll go off the edge of the screen. Okay, so you can see right where you are in sending it. Now having sent that, I picked 14.054 and it's uh, on the um, hex beam, okay, pointed generally northeast, kind of north-northeast. So let's go to the reverse beacon network, go to DX spot, right here, DX spot, spot search, okay. I put in my call sign, I'm the DX. Now, that sounds weird. I'm not really DX, unless somebody in India is desperate for Colorado for worked all states. The DE will be the receiving station. What we are interested in is the transmitting station. Now, can't they just say that? Well, they like to make things a little complicated. We are the DX because we are the transmitter, and the DE is who the spot is coming from. Okay, having done that, we go in here and look. These are the monitoring stations right here. And here are the call signs, namely mine. The frequency to a tenth of a hertz. What it was was CW. Now, CQ means CQ or a test. Now, here is something very, very interesting. The signal to noise ratio at the site, okay? Now, here is a case where I was heard uh, by the same station, okay? And, um, but otherwise I'm heard by other stations. But think what you can do with this. You can send a test, then you have to change your frequency slightly. Now this is a separate station over here, it heard it twice. Um, you have to change your frequency slightly or the system will think that you're just continuing to call CQ on the same frequency and it won't uh, give you another report. So you change your frequency slightly and then you can change to another antenna. And then you can go back and forth and back and forth between these two antennas and get a really good idea of how well one of your antennas performs against another. I just did this several times, all with the hex beam, so I could get this uh, picture here over a period of uh, close to 30 minutes, okay? So some final thoughts. It's especially easy to do this these days because the memories in modern HF rigs send perfect CW. Perfect machine sent CW is easy to decode by machines. Remember I showed you this picture up here the, where these, um, you've got to have like this, this, this is AE or is it R sent kind of slowly or wrong or something. It really wants to get perfect code. It really makes it a lot easier to determine uh, what that is, okay? So you don't even actually have to know any CW. You, you can just type it in using that keyboard that's on the screen. Now, to try a different antenna and compare, you need to nudge your frequency a bit and do it on a different frequency because then the system thinks that's a new station, okay? And by looking at the call signs of the stations, you can get a rough idea of where propagation is going at the moment. This is a pretty cool system. Okay, so there you have it. A little glimpse at the uh, reverse beacon network and some things that you can do with the CW memories in your radio, even though you may not send CW. 
If you do send it by hand, please do use a paddle so that uh, you're using a keyer and you can get beautifully shaped letters and watch your timing in between. Uh, if there's too much space left between letters, uh, the system might drop you. So you almost need to send letter perfect code. That's why the memories come in so handy. By the way, on the ICOM 7300, those same memories will work on voice. If you want to record something in there in your own voice, uh, there's a mechanism to do that. That sounds like a good video. Um, there's a mechanism in there to do that so that you can uh, use it for like calling CQ, okay? Or if you're doing a contest, CQ contest, CQ contest, you can put that in there. So all you have to do is touch that little button there and, and that call will go out, it'll save your voice. So that is a pretty neat uh, feature of it too. Lots of neat features in the modern radios. And here's just another one. So thank you again to Bruce Bittenbender for this suggestion. If you would like to support this channel financially, you can take a look at decastlercom slash support for various ways that you can do that. Also, please click like and subscribe. And until we next meet, 73.